Okay, welcome everyone to this lecture series on algebraic geometry. Or to be really precise on my point of view of algebraic geometry or what algebraic geometry is, I hope in the end you will find your own way to think about algebraic geometry. But this is always a goal, right? So I'm trying to make you think about your own ways of doing it. Think about your own definition, think about your own way of understanding it. Clearly, whatever I'm going to say is very biased because um, I'm explaining things the way I think I would have learned them the best way. So I did a huge mistake when I was young, <laughs> like a trillion years ago when I was young. So I was learning algebraic geometry by starting with modern algebraic geometry. We'll see uh, a little bit later what that is supposed to be. And I feel like that's not the right way for me. It might work for some people. Some people just open a book like Harshorn and then they're just like, oh yeah, that's what I want to do. It didn't work for me. And if that's not working for you, maybe this is the right class for you. I'm going to motivate a little bit at the structure of what I'm going to explain in this lecture series about the right geometry during this first uh, presentation. But as usual, really, I would like you to make just just go through the references, read a little bit about it, find your own picture, find your own way of explaining it. And essentially, all I'm doing is I'm kind of helping you along the way. Right? So this is not a silver bullet to algebraic geometry. Obviously, nothing really is a silver bullet. So practice makes perfect in the end. So you're so encouraged to uh, find your own references. If you Google algebraic geometry, you will find but by maybe very different points of view of algebraic geometry. Nevertheless, I've linked some of my favorite references down below. Always keep in mind there's a little description uh, below the video where you can, well, where I can park links uh, that I think are interesting, and you can find some additional resources. I'm trying to usually make everything kind of open access. It doesn't always work. I apologize. Sorry, kind of the system is still pretty bad. So a lot of things are kind of paywall hidden. I'm trying to go for the open access ones, but you know, nobody is perfect or system is not perfect. Blame everything on me. I am happy if you just blame everything on me. Excellent. Well, that was my introduction here. Um, so please bear with me. I hope it will be a fun ride. I, I pretty lo love algebraic geometry. And the main reason why I put it off for so long is that it has so many flavors that essentially whatever I'm going to do, I will offend someone. And it took me a while to get, to get used to that idea. And now I'm totally happy. Someone will be unhappy. I'm, I'm very sorry for you. Uh, the way I will explain algebraic geometry might not be yours. If it's not, quit the video, never come back. That's totally fine. If it is, I'm very happy. Um, and if it's not, I wish you obviously all the best trying to learn algebraic geometry or whatever it is you're looking for. So everything, all the slides and so on, they're available. And hopefully eventually I make some little later site where you could find some exercise or something. But that's just in the very far future or depending when you watch this video, maybe it actually already happened. Excellent. So let's go into it. So what is algebraic geometry? That's essentially uh, the title of this video. And yeah, what is algebraic geometry? Well, the best way to figure out what algebraic geometry is, is to pull up Dr. Google now and Google algebraic geometry. And you'll probably find a reasonably good explanation. Um, all I'm getting you in this video is my point of view on what it should be or what I have in mind if I think about algebraic geometry. I think of it as like a really powerful toolbox most of the time, which toolboxes might be uh, interesting in their own right, right? But most of the time I think of it like as a toolbox. So I'm very interested in parts of how to calculate things. I will see that later, not just how to understand things. Those are my important. Anyway, if I would need to boil it down to one sentence, and I can actually boil it down to one word, then as right geometry is all about polynomials. And by polynomials, I usually mean something in multiple variables, whatever, something like this minus y squared equals zero or some, some crap like that. Polynomial equations to be more precise. And yeah, that's algebraic geometry. Algebraic geometry is the algebraic study of geometric objects coming from polynomial equations. Okay, so I give you an example just to get started. So algebraic geometry, for me, I will always abbreviate that by the way as AG because I don't want to put too many words on a slide. Uh, that's just what it is. So AG is algebraic geometry. And for me, that really is polynomials. And kind of the standard example that I have in mind are conic sections. So let me just, from my second screen here, magic, magic, 
pull in a little uh, demonstration. So I have this equation here, which has this parameter e, and if I vary this e, I'm looking for points in the plane. So x and y are two, the two coordinates in the plane, x and y, points in the plane who satisfy that equation. Now that's it. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for solutions to polynomial equations. And you can easily plot that. And I'm a big fan of Mathematica, but you can definitely use open access software as well. I can just plot that using a contour plots. So here I have my equation y squared equals two times x plus this parameter, the epsilon, the elliptic parameter if you want, um, and whatever. And I'm just plotting the result for epsilon going from zero to two. So if epsilon is zero, here you see, maybe I zoom out a little bit, here you see uh, the result. Well, it's a circle. So a circle is part of algebraic geometry. That's usually a good start. Every mathematician likes circles, or maybe not likes circles, but um, would agree that circles are kind of important. So a circle is part of algebraic geometry, and it turns up as a solution of a polynomial equation for, well, this type of polynomial equation. And then I can vary this parameter, so I make it a little bit bigger, and it, you can't see anything. Let's make it a little bit bigger, and the circle will turn to an ellipse. You can barely see that right now, make it a little bit bigger. So you can read off what it is, make it a little bit bigger, and it will turn more like an ellipse type shape. It already looks like quite ellipsy. Ellipsy, is that a word? Anyway, it looks like an ellipse, and it goes bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah, this, this is a really nice ellipse. This is a really nice ellipse. But on the next step, you can uh, kind of already see it. So if I go up, kind of the ellipse stretches in the y direction, right? It goes bigger in the y direction. And at the next step, when e is 1, it's actually a parabola. So not just circles, ellipses, but also parabolas are part of algebraic geometry. And if it goes a bit bigger, then it will be a hyperbola. So this is, uh, it comes up in the other end again. So this actually is a hyperbola, and then uh, it will turn out to be just this hyperbola. So this is kind of the type of object algebraic geometry studies. Very kind of geometrically motivated, classical objects of algebraic to, uh, geometry are solutions to polynomial equations, including um, something like circles, ellipses, parabolas, hyperbolas, more fancy objects that we will uh, see as we move along in our little lecture. Okay. So for me, algebraic geometry has three parts. Well, the study of polynomials is kind of the frame outside. That's not quite algebraic geometry, to be honest. You could study po polynomials without ever looking at algebraic geometry at all. Totally fine. But it contains, at least in my little picture here, it contains algebraic geometry, which I divide into three parts. The classical part, which is about solutions to polynomial equations, with a fancy name attached to it, it's called a variety. So the ellipses, the circles, and the hyperbolas we have seen in the previous slide, they are varieties. They are solutions to polynomial equations. That's kind of the classical algebraic geometry, which goes back to at least the mid of the 1800, around 1850. Um, so at least the so people started doing this um, later, like the, the Hilbert type things, what Hilbert would have studied. That's maybe those like classical algebraic geometry. And then there was a new wave, new wave in the 1950s or so, which then got labeled as modern algebraic geometry. And it's essentially the same, studying the same type of objects, but taking a more abstract point of view. So maybe classical algebraic geometry is more like the algebra of polynomials, and maybe alge modern algebraic geometry is more the categorical behavior. Of polynomials. And in the 1980s, which I call modern version 2, so modern is kind of a weird name, right? If it's from the 1950s, maybe it's not that modern anymore. Anyway, that's what it's called. So I call the other one modern version 2, is like computational algebraic geometry. Turns out that algebraic geometry, it, it looks like if you just see what a scheme is as a definition or a sheaf or a stack or that, you know, all that shit that comes up in modern algebraic geometry, it's like this is uncomputable. Well, first of all, maybe at least at least that was how it was for me. My, my first impression was like I have no idea what's going on. My second impression is oh that's uncomputable. And then comes modern algebra, really modern version two algebraic geometry, and they're actually saying well it's maybe not so bad. Maybe it's not so bad. Well, that's that's what I think is um, kind of a good 
picture to have in mind of algebraic geometry. It's a study of circles under some different points of views, if you want. So what I really will do in kind of this class, is I want to do everything, all of them uh, at the same time. I, as I said, I feel like here's this modern part. Uh, that's how I got started with this field. I feel like this is not, well, kind of a little bit empty uh, without you knowing what, what, it has, what it is supposed to generalize, the classical world. But I also feel everything is a little bit empty without uh, ever being able to compute something. But actually, you could put algebraic geometry perfectly fine into a machine, and a machine will compute things for you. It's kind of, that's why I want to have all of them. Kind of the classical one, the motivation behind it, uh, the modern one, um, the abstract type of view, again, modern in huge quotation marks, and the modern version two one, which is like how to compute things. And I hope this gives a nice kind of wrap up of algebraic geometry. Um, I also will include a little bit of tropical geometry, which is like uh, in, into, this, into this field, which is like a, a new approach to algebraic geometry, making it a little, a little bit easier because polynomials are actually pretty crazy. Um, but that, that's roughly what I have in mind. And I hope you will enjoy the ride. Um, certainly, uh, I hope certainly that you will enjoy the ride, that's for sure. I, clearly, I can't cover everything, that's, that's for sure. So uh, maybe it always helps. Uh, to keep your own point of view in mind. Maybe you want to dive deeper into stacks, or maybe you do, then there will be some additional references, uh, again, in the description for you to enjoy or to ignore. It's really, really up to you. And keep in mind, practice makes perfect. So just watching a video probably will not get you there. Okay? So one direction, what I like about algebraic geometry, and it is probably well, if you design a YouTube video nowadays, you run into the problem that essentially everything has been done. So um, it's not just me trying to give my own flavor, but it's also making it a little bit interesting. And I'm always like a mathematician who stands in between liking an abstract point of view and liking it kind of an app uh, applied point of view to see it somehow ap applied somewhere. So something I also try to cover, I like at the very end, if you are familiar enough, uh, with all the notations uh, in algebraic geometry is applications of the story. Because algebraic geometry, if you see it, like as, 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 as I did, as I said, just jumping into Harshorn, it looks like this is never going to be applied anywhere, which is partially Harshorn's fault, I guess. Never, I don't want to blame anyone, no pointing fingers. But anyway, it really looked to me like this is never going to be applied anywhere. That's not a priori bad, but it's actually wrong. Right? So if something is not applicable, fine. Some people like that, some people don't like that. That's fine, totally fine. But for algebraic geometry, it's wrong. Algebraic geometry is maybe not at the heart of many fields outside of mathematics. It's at the heart of many fields inside of mathematics, that's for sure. But it's um, kind of it's helpful in other fields. For example, it shows up in robotnik by this idea of uh, homotopy continuation, which I'm going to address in a later video, it's essentially trying to solve a polynomial equation by going along a homotopy path and then kind of sneaking closer and closer to a possible uh, solution. And that's just really, really useful in robotics. And I'm going to try to cover that as well. Um, similarly, as right geometry has taken over cryptography. So I really like cryptography and there are many, many ways to do cryptography, but probably the most successful as of now is using some form of an elliptic curve. An elliptic curve is something we definitely will see, uh, not in this video actually, but of course somewhere in the course, uh, in the class, in the lecture series, it is part of algebraic geometry, part of all parts of algebraic geometry actually. It's part of classical algebraic geometry, it's part of modern algebraic geometry, and they're part of modern version two algebraic geometry. It has been turned off this, uh, this elliptic curves that are just super helpful in uh, cryptography, and I'm going to kind of describe that part as well. So what we are going to do, let me just summarize. Yeah, essentially done for this first video, I'm going to summarize. So my vision of algebraic geometry is, there's a motivational story, which is um, the classical story. Why would I care Well, I study polynomial equations? Well, if you don't understand why polynomial equations could be helpful, probably this video series is not for you. Um, 
kind of every it, they're just everywhere. Polynomials are just the basic fundamental objects in mathematics which are not linear. So it goes a little bit beyond uh, the linear world, but um, the linear world is not capturing all that much. So polynomials are essentially by definition interesting. So studying of polynomial equations, I hope that goes without motivation. And that's kind of the classical part is studying them using algebraic methods like factoring polynomials or polynomial vanishing things, something like that. So algebraic methods, which is the first thing I would like to address in such a class on algebraic geometry. And then the second part will be this modern point of view, which has turned out to be like really, really successful, started in the 1950s, the work of many, many, many people. Um, and it's, it's really fantastic. And it gives you like of a little bit more of a categorical flavor, uh, more of a bird's eye point of view on things. It's very powerful, but maybe a bit scary in particular. I was very scared. Oh, I was so scared. In particular, it looks like you know, can never compute that. And that's why I add kind of this modern, uh, modern version two, sorry, modern version two version of algebraic geometry, like computational algebraic geometry, which is like a really powerful, turns out to be a really powerful tool um, to how to fit algebraic geometry questions or ideas in a computer and the computer will do uh, the work for you. So magma, for example, uh, the, well, I'm sitting here in Sydney by recording this, is a, one of the computer algebra system of the University of Sydney. So a little local patriotism, hooray, hooray. So magma, you can run it in an online calculator and it's fantastic for algebraic geometry for several questions in algebraic geometry, for example. I'm trying to address that one as well covering a little bit like really modern points of view of algebraic geometry like tropical geometry as well and applications which is a lot of material so uh whether i will ever get there we'll see but i certainly can't cover everything so again said again practice makes perfect that puts some uh, nice links in the description but as that looks look sounds reasonably okay for you maybe this is the lecture series you want to go for i certainly hope you will enjoy it. Uh, so thank you so much for watching so far. I hope you enjoyed this video and I also hope to see you next time.